Welcome to today's episode of Ask the Pond Digger Show. Today we're going to talk about African cichlid ponds, airlift filter technology, and you're going to find out why it takes us so long to get some of our videos uploaded. Our first question comes from the M Flav on YouTube and he says, I have an off the wall question for you. I'm thinking about starting an African cichlid pond. How would you heat the water? Uh, I think this is, I picked this specific question because if it were not for African cichlids, I might not be sitting right here today talking to you about ponds. Uh, my fascination with African cichlids started when I was 18 years old and um, I, I got brought something to show you. This right here, this is my first company shirt, my first company t-shirt from about 25 years ago. Check this out. Now that is a cool African cichlid. Ophthalmo tilapia boops ventralis right there. And um, anyways, African cichlids uh, fascinated me when I was 18 years old. I do want to give a shout out to a friend of mine from from all that time ago who got me into African cichlids and took advantage of my passion in a very good way and just pushed me along. His name's at Joe the Fish Guy on Instagram. Here's a link right here. Go check out his Instagram page and tell him that, um, tell him thank you for getting me into ponds because he's responsible for that. So with that being said, I wanna tell you, uh, when, I, when I went to Hawaii, I thought it was amazing because I saw African cichlids in some of the ponds. And if you're in a, an amazing, wonderful tropical climate, you can get away with having them in your, uh, in your water features, in your ponds. I uh, will tell you, in Southern California, I've done it a couple times, 25 years ago when I was living in the, uh, in the high deserts in the Yucca Valley Joshua Tree area, I would have uh, some outdoor uh, kiddie pools that I would fill with, with rock and there was a couple months in the summertime where I could get away with putting fry out there and they would grow really fast because the water would be warm, the colors would be amazing because they'd be getting in the sun, they'd be eating the natural algae that grows on the rocks. So an African cichlid pond is pretty cool. I, I've done one also indoors at a pet shop I did uh, probably 10 or 15 years ago and we filled it with fish and it was a lot of fun um, this there's actually a, a, a neat case I want to tell you about in Utah there was a, a fish breeder that I used to deal with and he had a natural spring so literally you'd get three foot of, of snow around the pond steam coming off the pond it was fed by a natural spring pH 8 to water temperatures always you know 78 to 82 and it was really an amazing uh, pond because you would see schools of frontosas and cyanochromos alis electric blues swimming in schools it was fantastic um, there's not really too many heaters that we can do in Southern California we have great weather but the winter is is still hard enough on on them and it would cost you quite a bit of money to do like a swimming pool filter to heat that water to that certain temperature if you're gonna do an African cichlid pond you either have to bring them in for the winter or potentially put up a greenhouse around the pond uh, we have a greenhouse that we take care of in um, in Riverside and it's full of koi. I want to I want to take the koi out of there so bad and just fill it with with African cichlids because right now in January we're having nighttime lows in the 50s, much too cold for Africans, but in that greenhouse I know it's about 78 degrees and the Africans would be super cool. So um, the M Flav, thanks for asking that question and I wish you the best of luck with your African cichlids and uh, we'll move on to the next one. This one comes in from the Netherlands and he says, do you ever install airlift technology on your ponds? And this is a pretty advanced question actually, and not because airlift technology is new by any stretch, they've been doing it for decades, uh, especially in the aquarium division, the aquarium world, airlift has been you know, a big, big part of, of the whole growth of the industry. And right now you're starting to see some airlift technology come into the, the pond world and it's, it's super cool. The, I will tell you the Helix Pond Skimmer was designed a little bit around airlift technology and we are actually running several of our skimmers uh, on airlift. And why is this important? Because a skimmer needs a pump that might 
might be 150 to say 300 watts to make that skimmer run effectively. Somewhere in that range is pretty typical, 150 to 300 watts. But with an airlift technology, we can use 60 watts to make that skimmer work effectively and, and make the pond clear. So imagine the savings that you get when you start to get into that. The, the energy efficiency is uncomparable. I have um, a good friend of mine, Jake from Aqua Eden. I know we've mentioned him on the show before. He has a 30,000 gallon pond and he has all kinds of airlift technology on there. He also has some, some standard uh, centrifugal pumps to help move water during certain times of the year but most of the time he's running that pond off of airlift skimmers suction grids bog filters and the pond is fantastic it's eight foot deep crystal clear to the bottom all ran off the of airlift so i think you're going to see more and more of that technology come into our world and uh it's probably more than I can talk about on, on an episode of Ask the Pond Digger of how it all works. If you are considering airlift technology, you can send us an email and then we can, we can talk more about your specific system. And I imagine in the future, we'll do some kind of uh, tutorial on one of, our, uh, one of our video series. And one final thing, I have a really good friend of mine, Kent Wallace in Las Vegas, uh, Nevada, and he is very passionate about airlift technology, and he's been a big resource of information for me, and I think he tries to put airlift in probably every, every pond design that he does uh, still to this day. So that's what you're gonna get on airlift from me. I'll move on, and I have a question from a young man named Dylan Stevenson from YouTube. He's also been asking me questions on uh, on Facebook as well and in some of the, the, the koi forums that we go in and out of. And um, he says, hey, I love your videos, but it's been like two months, two months since the last one. Do you know when the rest of the series will come out? Now, he's not the only one that's been saying, when will the next video come out? Uh, there was a Ben Holder said, when's the rest of the Koi Pond series? I have a Ricardo Lamelli. He wants to know when the series is going to be done. And these are just some of the guys that are drilling us wanting to know. I have to tell you, um, my producer and I, we planned the how to build a Koi Pond. And that's the one they're specifically asking me about today. We planned that over five years ago. We we're like, we have to film the, like, the best comprehensive tutorial on how to build a Koi Pond from start to finish. And it took us a long time to dive into it because it was such an undertaking. Literally, it took us over six months to film. Every single weekend we were filming, sometimes all weekend, but usually only on Sundays. And we would film for sometimes 10 and 12 hours in a day. We went through the heat of the summer. Uh, we burnt up a $15,000 camera from overheating it and getting it too dusty. We went through, it was, it was a laborious task. and. Uh, so I have to tell you, it took us six or seven months. I don't know, I don't remember exactly, but it took us so long to film. And you have to know that to edit those things, that the quality that my producer is pushing to the level and that the editing process is twice that length. And um, he, he works his tail off to do it. So a big kudos to our producer for uh, pushing so hard to bring you such quality educational content. Um, the video will be up and completed very soon. And um, I think the question I wanna to get to here is, oh, I know what I wanna tell you. Look, we probably, we probably would have had it completed already, but we, we took a break in the winter. We stopped at the winter around the new year and we, we took a step backwards so we could take giant leaps forward in 2015. At that time frame, we sat down and said, what do we want to accomplish? What do our viewers want? What do we got to bring to people? And uh, we decided that you guys want more content, more consistently, faster, and, and we came up with the Ask the Pond Digger show. And uh, we're glad to tell you that at this point right now, we have over 100 Ask the Pond Digger shows planned for you this season. On Tuesday mornings and Friday mornings at 4 a.m., we will be uploading new Ask the Pond Digger videos, and we're gonna throw in some bonus, uh, bonus shows along the way on special long weekends so you can you can be rest assured we're going to put in a lot more content for you this year so i kind of want to apologize that it took so long but i want you to understand what level um, of commitment that we took to to bring it to you at the same time so here's my question uh of the day for you because know that we would shoot during the weekend we would edit during the week, try and get you a couple of videos before we went out to shoot some more. So we were like giving you the content as we were building the pond. And so my question to you is, 
Do you want us to continue to push the tutorial fish, uh, videos in that fashion as we film, we push the content? Or would you rather us wait until the whole series is done and then we push it all at once? And then tell me, are you gonna be sad when that video series is over? I wanna know. Put your questions right here in the comments. And please, you know how hard I work for you. My producer and I, we work our tails off to bring you that content. Do us a favor and share this video with someone that you think it could help. Share it with your, your, um, your Facebook pages and, and push that video around for us to get that content to more people because it would help us greatly. And I know we've helped you. So there you have it for today's show. If you want your questions asked, uh, answered on Ask the Pond Digger, you know how to do it. Hashtag Ask the Pond Digger, and we will see you again very short, very soon. Mm -hmm.